I've shown you how to paint a flat wash and I've shown you how to paint a graded wash. Today I'm going to demonstrate my favourite and that's a variegated wash. If you've been following along with my basic wash tutorials, I've shown you how to paint a flat wash and I've also demonstrated a graded wash. The next step is a variegated wash and that's what this video is about. I love getting new art supplies. I've just bought a new watercolour journal that I can use to demonstrate different painting techniques here on YouTube. I don't want to keep using my expensive ash paper to do quick demos on, so that's why I bought this one. This is a Strathmore visual diary. It has 22 sheets of 140 pound watercolour paper in it. It's got a hard cover and what I like about this one is that you can open it right out and use it either in landscape or in portrait orientation quite easily. I've been using it to practice my variegated washes just so that I can show you how to do them properly. I needed to do a bit of practice so I don't show you any of my bad habits. Just recapping from the previous videos, a flat wash is consistent in tone and colour from top to bottom, whereas a graded wash is one where the colour is darker at the top and it gradually gets lighter as you work your way down the paper. A variegated wash contains more than one colour and it's a lot less predictable than a flat or a graded wash. You never quite know what it's going to look like. You might use a variegated wash if you were painting a sunset or some grass or some water or just a background like I did here. I'll be demonstrating how I painted the background on this painting towards the end of the video. A couple of things to remember before you start. Just like the other washes, you need to mix up enough colour so that you don't run out. And you'd be wise to test your colours on a piece of scrap paper first, just to see how they look like when they blend together before you use them on your painting. Again, it's always a good idea to use the biggest brush that you're comfortable with for the size of the area that you're painting. Okay, so let's take a look at a very basic variegated wash. On my palette here I've got some blue, some yellow, some orange and some violet. When I put the colours on the paper I'm going to try to keep the complementary colours away from one another because when they mix together they tend to produce a grey. I want to try and keep all my colours clean. I also need to make sure I've got enough colour mixed up for myself so that I don't run out. I'm going to work on wet paper and I'll use my mop brush to put the water on. It holds a lot of water and I can apply it really quickly with this. I'll use this smaller round brush to put the paint on. This is a number 8 Da Vinci Casaneo. So I'm painting some water on the paper. And when I've finished putting the water on, I'll show you how much is on there. I like my paper to be fairly wet when I work, but I make sure I put the water on evenly. So here's the water on the surface. You can see it's evenly covered and there's a glossy sheen. So it's ready for me now. I use the smaller brush to pick up the blue paint. And I'll paint that across the top of the wet paper. I'm painting my brush strokes horizontally just like I painted the flat wash and the graded wash that I demonstrated in the previous videos. Then I wash the blue paint out of my brush and I dab off the excess water. I don't want to contaminate the next colour with a dirty brush. So I pick up some of the yellow paint and then I overlap this stroke with the bottom edge of my previous stroke and I keep working my way down the paper. I pick up some more paint when I need it and then I take it all the way to the bottom. Now what I have to remember to do is to remove any excess paint from the bottom and around the edges and I can do that with my clean damp brush. Or I can also use a tissue. 
I just need to get that excess paint off there. That one was a basic wash with two colours, just to remind you how it feels to lay a wash down. In this next wash that I'm going to show you, I'm going to use three colours and I'm not going to paint them on in that linear horizontal way. I'll paint some water onto the paper again, just like I did before. I'll use the mop brush because it's quicker. And when it's got a good even layer of water over the top, I'll pick up some of the blue paint with the other brush and I'll put that onto the paper. But this time I'll paint it in a more random fashion. Now I'll wash the blue paint out of my brush and I'll pick up some of the yellow paint. And again, I'll put the paint on in a more relaxed manner. So I just put that where I want it and then I'll wash the yellow paint out of my brush and I'll pick up some of the orange paint. I'm just trying to keep those complementary colours away from one another because if they mix together they'll create a grey and I don't really want a grey on here. I just want to keep all my colours pure. So now I'm going to pick up the book and just tilt it so that the colours will move around on the paper. Now there's a fair amount of water on the paper and that's just allowing those colours to move. Tilting it like that just helps to blend the colours together. Now you can see some excess paint on the side of the paper there. I need to remove that or it will run back onto the drying paint and cause some watercolour blooms to form. So I just use a damp brush just to wipe over the top and just sop up the paint. You can see it's forming there again. So I'll just keep using this brush and wiping it over the top until all that excess paint is gone. I can also use a tissue just to remove the excess. Now I can still see a bit of paint there just because I'm holding the book upright. So I just need to get rid of that. Alright, so I'm just going to lay this down flat so that it can dry. Now that they're dry, I can take the tape off and have a look at them. And the two at the top, I painted earlier just so that I could have a practice before I showed you. So you can see how those colours have just softly merged into one another. You don't have to pick your paper up and tilt it if you don't want to. I just wanted to show you that you can do that to move the paint around. If you don't want to do that, just leave it flat and let it dry. Now, if you've done any of my tutorials, you'll know that I love creating deliberate watercolour blooms. I think they add texture and interest to your paintings. As beautiful as I think they are, sometimes they'll occur when you don't want them to. If you go back into your wash with your brush and try to fix things after it started to dry, you're just going to make a mess. So avoid doing that until you've got more experience. Now, I want to show you how to create some deliberate blooms. And I'm also going to show you something that can go wrong with your wash. On the top of the page here, I'll paint a wash and I'll create some deliberate blooms to show you. I've shown you this before, but I thought I'd include it here as well. Now my paper is wet, just like it was before, and now I'm just painting some violet on in a loose, random sort of way. Then I wash the violet paint out of my brush, and I pick up the blue and I do the same thing. Now as I said, I wash my paint out between colours, just to keep the colours pure. So then I can tilt the paper and that just helps the colours blend a little. So then I can pick up some more of the violet 
And I'll just put that on as well. Just in a loose way. That's some more blue. So I just tilt the paper just to help blend the colours. And that also helps to get rid of some of that excess moisture that's on the paper. That's why I like to work with a towel underneath me. Now because my paper is fairly wet, I've still got time to come back in with my brush and do a bit of moving around if I want to. If this was starting to dry, I wouldn't be able to do that. I need to make sure the paper's wet. You can see that paint just dripping off the side there. Okay, so now I have to do the same thing again. I just take off any excess paint that's still there. I can use my brush or I can use a tissue. And then once I've done that, I just need to let it sit and dry. So as soon as I've sopped up that excess moisture, I'll just show you the paint on the paper. So here it is here. You can see it's quite wet paper's glossy so that needs to sit and start to dry and when it starts to dry the sheen will go off the surface so while that dries I'll just do this bottom rectangle and I want to show you what can go wrong so I put the water on with the mop brush get it nice and evenly covered again Now this time I'm going to use some yellow paint. Do the same thing, I just put it on randomly, just in a loose way. I'll pick up some more paint and I'll put it down over here in this corner. And now I'll wash the paint out of my brush and pick up some of the orange. Just put that on, just in a loose way as well. Now I can leave it like that and let it dry flat or I can pick it up and tilt it again. So this one I think I'll just leave it and let it dry flat. What I have to do is just get this excess moisture off again. So just use my damp brush just to take that off. And then once that's off, I can let it sit and dry. So what went wrong with this one, you'll see a little later, but there's a big puddle of paint just sitting right here. Now I neglected to remove it. So I just want to show you what will happen after it's dried. Before I do that, I just want to come back up here to this purple one that I did earlier. Now because it's been sitting there, it has dried slightly, so I just want to show you what it looks like now. So there's the paint on the surface. It's still got a sheen, but the sheen is not as bright and glossy as it was. It's starting to dry, so now I can drop some water in it to create some deliberate blooms. So I've just got water on my brush, and that just rushes in and dislodges some of that drying pigment and creates those shapes. So here on the purple wash, I'm doing it deliberately. But on the orange wash, where the excess paint is sitting, it will do it by itself. And that's not what I want. Sometimes I'll use my water spray bottle and I'll just half squeeze the trigger in and that just drops some random water droplets just onto the surface and it does the same thing. Sometimes I use this little mist bottle and it just puts a fine spray or a fine mist on the surface and creates some texture that way. Okay, so that one's dried. You can see those lovely shapes there. But this one has also got a watercolour bloom on it that I didn't intend. 
And that occurred because of that water and paint that was sitting in a puddle at the top there that I didn't remove. So not only look for excess water and paint on the side of the wash, but also look for it on the wash itself. If you see a big puddle of paint, then tilt your board and remove some of it off the paper. Or if it's wet enough, use your brush to sop some of it back up. Okay, now I want to show you how to use a variegated wash on a painting. I painted this little wren this week and I put this variegated wash on the background. Before I painted it, I did a really quick little thumbnail sketch and I applied some paint to the background just to see what it would look like. And when that worked out okay, I went ahead and I painted the background on my painting. So I'll show you that now. I've drawn my little wren here on some Arsh cold press watercolour board and what I'm going to do now is tape it to a board and then I'm going to mask off the wren so that I don't get any paint on it. I've taped my paper to the board and now I'm just applying some masking fluid just over the branch. I've put some washi tape which is low tack over the body of the bird and then I'll just use this masking fluid just to fill in the rest. As I said, I work fairly wet and I didn't want to risk splashing some paint onto the body of the bird, so the tape will just stop any paint that I might splash there. Okay, so I've covered everything with masking fluid and now I'm ready to start my wash. So I'm going to put some water on with my big mop brush. I'm not going to put water on the entire board because it'll dry too quickly. So I'll just do one half and then I'll do the other half. So you can see I use a fair amount of water when I do this. So you have to work fairly quickly when you're painting these washes. You need to make sure that all your paint is mixed up, ready to go. And I'm just going to use my number eight Da Vinci Castaneo brush, it's a bit smaller than the mop. And I'm just going to use some colours that I'll use on the bird itself. So I'll start with some Windsor Violet. And I want this Windsor Violet to run behind the bird in a diagonal strip. So even though it looks like I'm just painting the paint on randomly, I do have a plan in my head. And I also did that little thumbnail sketch in my journal. The other thing I need to be aware of is that I keep my paint within the boundaries of the water. I don't want to take the paint all the way to the edge of the water, otherwise I'll get a hard line there. So I've got some cobalt blue now, and I washed the violet out of my brush before I picked the blue up. I want my colours to be pure, I don't want them to be mixed on the palette, I want them to mix on the paper. So I'll just put some blue down in this bottom section as well. You can see I'm keeping the paint within the boundaries of the water there. I haven't gone to the edge of where the water is sitting. So now I can add some more water to this other side. And I can continue painting over here. So I put it on as quickly as I can because I know that I have to do it quickly because I don't want the paper to dry. Now I've got the violet again so that I can continue that band of colour behind the bird. And then I can wash the purple out of my brush and pick up the blue again. The other thing I want to try and do is make the colour a bit softer away from the bird. So as the colour moves out towards the edges of the paper, I want it to be slightly lighter. I want most of the pigment around the bird itself. So even though it looks like I'm just slapping the paint on, I am thinking about what I'm doing. So 
So now I can pick the board up and just move the paint a little bit just to get some drips. And as I said, you don't have to lift the board and tilt it. You can just let it dry flat. Just make sure that there's no great pools of paint sitting anywhere. Otherwise you'll get those watercolour blooms forming. So now I need to make sure that I've got no excess paint or moisture sitting anywhere. So I clean up the sides and I make sure that there's no great puddles sitting on the paper itself. So that's how it has dried. I'll just take this tape off the masking fluid. And ta-da! He's all finished. Just take this tape off the edge. And there he is. So there's that variegated wash behind him. I was really happy with the way my wash turned out. If you want to see how I painted the wren, a full-length tutorial will be available on my Patreon site very soon. The link is in the description of this video. I want to give my patrons a big thank you because I know they'll be watching this. Thanks so much to all of you for your support. It's very much appreciated. So there you are. That's how I painted a variegated wash. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you very soon with a new tutorial. It's always a good idea to use to used. It's always a good idea to use. A couple of things. Top's crooked. I'll be demonstrating how I painted the background on this painting. <coughs> painting. <coughs> What's a painting?